Warning, spending your time and your hard-earned cash on a brand new website or even a website refresh or revamp may be exactly where you need to be spending said time and money or it may not be. After all, time sure is money when you're a creator or a creative entrepreneur and small business owner. Sometimes a DIY fresh coat of paint will do the trick, but sometimes you need to go all HGTV on your website or trading spaces. Does anyone remember that show? So good. Anyway, you need to pull your website down to these studs and start all over again. And in doing that, you'd be consulting an expert or two along the way. But how do you know if you actually need a website refresh or update, or if whatever sales problems that you're seeing are happening somewhere else in your market? marketing plan. Well, this video is going to take you through five audit step checkpoints that you can go through to determine if you even need this website update, refresh, revamp, whatever, or not. Because the good news is there are some gut level questions that you can ask yourself here in these next 10 minutes or so in this video. Those will help you determine if your website is the culprit or maybe not and what to do to fix it. I'm going to give you specific actionable audit steps that you can take for each of the five checkpoints I have. I'm also going to get a little math nerdy and tell you exactly how to find your conversion rate. So if you thought that is mystical or hard to figure out before, hopefully you won't in this video. This is part two of a little three-part series that I'm doing on your website and your website copies. So if you haven't yet, be sure to open up in another tab. I'll link it down below. Last week's video, I walked through the seven phases or parts of gathering and making sure that you have your website content and copy together so you can execute your website update. Next week's video is going to be all about what I have learned from my very first custom website. I've been in business for five Five years built a seven-figure business but I've never invested in a custom website till now so I'm going to tell you kind of what I've learned along the way to make sure you don't miss that one make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it below plus if you stay tuned till the end I'm going to tell you three things that I've learned I'm a words girl but I've learned a lot from being around uh, people that are more visually driven when it comes to websites graphic designers art directors photographers and I'm going to share those with you too click like if you're excited and this is just what you need by the way if we haven't met my name is Ashlyn Carter and I'm a conversion copywriter and launch and brand strategist for creative entrepreneurs just like you because trying to figure out what to say and how to say it should not be the thing that is holding you back from making sales. Okay, let's get right to it. Number one, you may need a website update or refresh if your prices aren't clearly listed or argued for on your website. Oh, I know I'm going right for the jugular with number one, but picture this for me. You're out to dinner at a nice-ish restaurant with some new-ish friends and you all sit down together and by the way, you've only got cash in your wallet. Nearly every single thing on the menu looks really good and it's got the price listed to it. It's perfect, you've got the cash to cover it. But one thing that looks like a whole situation that you would absolutely be into, says next to it that it is available at the market price. So there's no price point listed. Again, this is not your family or your BFFs and you only have cash. What are the odds that you stick your neck out there and ask for that or ask what the price point is in front of everybody? Here's the thing, a lot of us are probably just gonna play it safe and go with what we know that we could afford. I bring up that little illustration because I do not care and truly I've worked with thousands of students and hundreds of clients at this point. I don't care what industry you're in, people want to know or have some, some sort of framework or understanding for where you might fall in the pricing spectrum before they reach out to you. I mean, maybe there's exceptions, but they're very rare. And I have heard the excuses before. I have felt the excuses hands up before. Maybe you only do custom work and custom quotes. Been there. Maybe you just feel like your prices are too high and they are gonna scare people off. I've felt that. Maybe you feel like, I don't know how to convey the value of what I do and to put my price point out there just it seems like no one would inquire if I stuck it out there. You may be the type that thinks if I can just get them to the call, to that discovery session or the kickoff or the coffee date, then I can show them my beautiful pricing and services magazine and they'll want to work with me then. Or maybe this is you, you worry that your competition is then gonna see what you price at and beat you on price. Click like if any of those resonate. I have absolutely felt those before. But here's the deal. For your audit checkpoint question number one, I want you to pause and answer this for me. If your dream client or customer was scrolling through your website right now, today, what three questions would they have about your pricing or your pricing structure? And would you be able to find answers to them on your website without reaching out, emailing you, filling out your contact form, getting on a call? whatever, are they answered on page. There are so many different messaging work throughs you can go through to price anchor and communicate a price without 
coming out and saying something that you're not comfortable with, I promise. One idea is that you can give a starting at price point or a percentage of budget. So for example, if you're a calligrapher or a stationer, you could say something like, most of our clients tend to spend eight to 15% of their entire wedding budget on stationery and paper. That at least helps her understand, is this even in the realm of my budget or not? You can provide common ranges and you could also list maybe what would affect that going up or down as well. And you can showcase the different factors that will influence your pricing. My system for writing sales pages or services pages is the Sweet 16 system. And so I have this template in my shop, but essentially it walks through in one section what I call the Starbucks test. Because I feel like we've all bought something and to anchor it, we hear something like, you could buy four coffees a month or you could skip that and get this. That's what I mean, that's price anchoring. It helps take something that's a little esoteric and pull it down into layman's terms for us and how we'd spend on a daily or week to week basis. You need to be able on your pricing pages, on your website, services, sales pages, however you're categorizing it, to communicate that to your dream client or customer. That way they can self-select. Either they can afford it or even after seeing the explanation, they can mosey on their way, this was not a fit for them. Number two, you may need a website update or refresh if your website is more focused on you. You've heard the rumors, it's true. When people are on your website, they're not looking for you. They don't care about you as much as they are looking out for number one. And they're looking at your website to have a mirror held back so they can see themselves. So a ninja trick on figuring out this, your little audit step is easy. I want you to go to a page of your website and or a couple and hit control F, run a search for words like I, me, we, and us, and then run another search for the word you. Who wins the word count situation there? Like I said, they're looking for that mirror back to them even on your about page. I'm gonna get a little granular here, but I've talked about this with so many different clients and customers over the years, and I know what it's like to feel like, well, I can't use you language because it feels like I'm trying to solve a problem for them, and what I do doesn't solve a problem. I offer a luxury or I offer something that is beautiful and it's artistry based, and so I can't bring up all this you, you, you language because then I sound like, I don't know, the dad in the Matilda movie where it's just so sleazy and car salesman-y and I don't wanna be like that, Ashlyn, so that's why I'm talking about myself. Well, I get that and I hear you on that, but I want you to keep this in mind. When people are out there shopping, they're looking to purchase a better version of themselves, no matter what they're buying. People wanna feel like they've made a wise, smart shopping decision or money decision. They wanna make their friends and family proud or even impressed. Ego absolutely plays into our shopping and our money decisions. Maybe they wanna feel nostalgic or at peace or rested or some emotion they're looking for. Maybe, this goes for you if you're B2B, they wanna be looked at as one smart cookie or the hero to their team, their colleagues, or their boss. And yes, the problem one you hear all the time, they want to solve the things that keep them up at night. I run through this because as you talk about you and use you language on your website, I want you to speak to that desire they have. So if you've always framed things as you're trying to sell to the problem and you're trying to solve their problem, maybe it's the desire that you actually need to speak to and you still need to make it about them and their desire. Another way that you can mirror back to your clients and customers is get absolutely obsessive about collecting testimonials and social proof. But pro tip, be on the lookout and keep your nose to the ground, ear to the ground, what it's ear to the ground, about making sure that when you're pulling it, people are either telling you, you're asking, asking them or you're just highlighting the ones that showcase the people that had an objection first to purchasing from you or working from you, but they bought anyway and you overcame that with your product or service. There's going to be absolute gold when you're installing them on your website because that is a brilliant way that you can mirror back to people without you talking. You can let somebody else do the talking for you. Here's a little hack if you're bad at collecting testimonials or social proof. Definitely get into the habit of screenshotting. If someone shares about your brand, screenshot that social proof share. But one thing I do is on Thursdays, I have a checklist point on my daily tasks for every single Thursday. That's just the day I do it, um, where I make sure that I'm taking those and I'm filing them in the appropriate folder or I'm baking them into whatever page on our website or landing pages, sales pages, so I can speak against objections. So just make this a recurring task for you. Screenshot like crazy, 
screenshot things when clients and customers send them to you. I've done some videos in the past, I'll link them about testimonials. All I want you to do here is start to get in the habit of collecting them like crazy. Number three, you may need a website update or refresh if you're actually not really clear on your business strategy or your offer ladder. So the other week I was on a dream potential client call but it took about 30 whole minutes for me to understand their offer ladder and their dream progression of a customer journey that they wanted their customers to take. Even understanding the basic value prop of each offer that they had, because they had a few, was it took like 30 minutes for us to figure out, for me to understand. And a lot of times when we feel flustered about what our offer ladder is or what the value prop of our individual offers are, it can feel like the best solution is just let's get a new website, one that is more articulate towards our dream customer or client or has better design or whatever. The problem though is that puts the cart before the horse. And yeah, maybe you do need a website refresh or revamp down the road, but your problem is deeper than that. And before you work on any of that, you've got to get high hyper clear on your offer ladder and what the UVP or USP of each of your offers, products, or services is. What I so admired about this client is they were like, you know what, let's listen to the research, let's dig into what our people even want from us, and then we'll start to flesh out what this offer ladder is, how we want to move people along, and then how we can communicate and package that, I've called it your onlyness factor, your UVP or your USP is for each of those offers. Ding, 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 so smart. So they're using data to inform their structure and their content on their website, and that's what you have got to be doing too. If you don't have an offer strategy, behind your whole website and clear positioning for each of your offers, then no, I can pretty much guarantee you that your individual landing pages of your website are nowhere near converting like they should be. So here's my audit number three checkpoint question for you. Could you pause this video, pretend we're talking right now, and tell me off the top of your head, in a nutshell, what the pitch is for your signature product or offer. For example, copywriting for creatives is the first and only solution for you to master your message, write your site, and launch it to sell in 30, 60, or 90 days. I want you to be able to do that and be so clear about your different offers and understand where they fall in a customer or client journey. Then the website structure and site map can be formulated around that. And if someone is trying to wheel and deal and sell you on website design without making sure you understand that and you can communicate that to them, run for the hills, build the business first, understand that, and then start to invest. Again, I'm gonna talk about some solutions to that in next week's video, so hit subscribe if you have not yet. Number four, you may need a website update or refresh if your content isn't exactly the milkshake marketing strategy bringing all the customers and clients to the yard, aka this is a traffic issue. I told my email list in my weekly dog year email the other week that launching is essentially a numbers game, it's a math game, and websites are very similar. For example, I've seen people launch a website before and hear crickets on the back end of it and wonder why that happened, but they didn't give people a reason to go check out that new website or see what's there. Or they had their one big launch and then the traffic peters off after that. I bring this one up because it may be time to get a little more advanced with your content strategy to keep regular traffic coming there so the conversion rate can do its thing. Some ideas here, you could add a video or an audio component to your content strategy. You could absolutely increase and dial up your SEO juice. I did that three-part video series on SEO and how you can increase that. I'll link that down below so you can check. That could be an option. You could also commit to weekly or two times a week or every other week, whatever your plan. Emails that go out to your list to keep pulling people back to your website as well. I did a whole series earlier this year on email marketing, so I'll link that below too. Again, so much of your website's conversion rate is based on a traffic strategy and how much traffic is actually landing on that website so it can work. And if you're just out there kind of willy-nilly spray and pray social media plan without driving them back to this foundation, this website that you know converts like a machine, why are you spending so much time on social media? Because it needs to be pushing them to a place where they see your offer, they can very quickly decide whether to work with you or not, understand how to do that, pay you for it, move on. So audit checkpoint number four here, I want you to check your conversion rate. We're gonna do some math. In last week's video, I gave some specific points for your industry that may be a good conversion rate for you to consider. Don't freak out about data. It is absolutely your friend when it comes to website design, content, copy, and strategy. Essentially, a conversion rate is the number of conversions there divided by the number of visitors in a given time period. Then you'll take that, multiply it by 100. So for sake of example, let's pretend that you had 6,000 unique visitors land on your pre-designed logo template shop or your watercolor item shop and 40 sales came through because of that. Your conversion rate would be based on this math 
0.7%. That's kind of low. I would like it to be more around the two to three-ish plus percent, but at least now we know, right? Also pro tip, I go to geteasysolution.com or just Google X is what percent of X, like and plug in my numbers, that is a great way to find the conversion rate as well. Comment below if that helps you demystify what a conversion rate is. I certainly hope it does. And number five, finally, you may need a website update or refresh if the aesthetics are off. So if you've gone through the four that I've walked through earlier in this video and you've green light passed them, then you, my friend, are finally allowed to wave the cosmetic flag and tell me that it's the aesthetics that you don't like on your website and that's why you need to change it. Why is this the last piece? Well, as we say down here in the South, you can't put lipstick on a pig and I promise you all four of those steps that I mentioned earlier are way more important than the aesthetics of your brand and the actual visual branding of it. Now that's important and you do need to look and walk and talk the part of seeming like the brand that you're claiming to be and that you're proposing to be with your business. But I've talked to so many followers and students and clients that have spent a chunk of change, like truly an arm and a leg on the aesthetics of a website without those other four components we talked through and it's not working. And I don't want that to happen to you. So don't reach for the fact that your website doesn't look the part first when you're trying to assess why it's not working. It may be one of those other things I talked about or it may be the aesthetics, but just think about that it could be a combo. I told you at the top of this video, I was gonna tell you three things that I have learned over time being a copywriter and a words girl, but working with people that are way more aesthetically in the know than me, and here they are. Number one, you may have heard me say this story before, but I was working with my very first art director on my very first brand shoot, and she was going through my website, and she said, Ashlyn, some of these images are great, but they have nothing to do with the copy that they're next to. Duh, I totally needed to hear that. Your imagery should be reflective of the copy that you're working through. So even on a long form sales page, if you've got some sort of copy, then make sure that you're reflecting that in the image back. She was absolutely right. So this goes for your entire website and even on your landing pages too. Stock imagery is a good thing, but be aware that you're trying to message match along the way. And if you're talking about something in your copy, how can that be absolutely accurately reflected in the image next? to it. Number two, I learned to go with fewer, better images. I think early on in my career, I just stocked and stuffed my website with all the images that I could find for my portfolio and so on and so forth. But over time, I learned to trim that down and give fewer, better images. Here's another little tip. I think I've said this to copywriting for creative students all the time, but be really careful with carousels. And when you're installing carousels on your website, we had a client one time when we were testing about 10% of the traffic that landed on a certain page clicked through to the next image on a carousel and then 10% of that traffic clicked through to the next image. I'll boil this down by saying that carousels, especially the ones you have to click through, just don't usually work when it comes to showcasing your work. So either have them on auto scroll and only have, like I said, as few images as possible or nix the carousel completely and figure out how to showcase your portfolio work elsewhere. And the number three thing I've learned as I've worked with graphic designers, website designers and brand photographers is that you absolutely need to, this goes for when you're working with a photographer, stage and develop multiple iterations of the same styled look. So if we're shooting this scene, I'm going to want horizontal. I'm going to want horizontal with a lot of things pulled for white space to be available. I'm going to want to maybe even pull some stuff over here. So I've got some white space available here and move some of the things around. I'll get some horizontal shots of it. I'll get some long shots of it. Nothing is worse than being to the point where you're installing on your website and you think this image is so great, but it's not going to work because all we have is vertical versions of it and we need a horizontal. And if we crop it, it loses the whole integrity of the image. Take it from me. Always make sure you have a photographer shoot lots of different iterations of those styled looks you have. All this goes to say, if you fail to outline why you do what you do, the way you do it differently or better than your competition in your website messaging, then it doesn't really matter how pretty your website is. So I just want to make you aware of that. But the design does matter. I have a video, I will link it down below where I walk through my best strategies for picking a website template. Again, I've said it, you can make a lot of money and have a really great website that's built off a template. I just don't want you to start with a visual brand. Okay, now you've heard these five tips and you can kind of honestly rate yourself on where you fall. You may know, yep, 100%, I need a website refresh 
or revamp, or you may think, nope, I've got what it takes. I'm good to go. I'm going to mosey on my way. If you're in that former camp though, I've got two tools that may help you out today. They're both free. The first one is my Google Docs website copy template starter. This is going to help you begin with the end in mind for some of the keystone pages of your website. I also have a full list of 44 questions that your website must answer. So if you enjoyed going through these five checkpoints and you want a few more to make sure that you're moving in the right direction, then look down below and make sure you grab that one as well. Now that you've determined if your website needs a revamp or a refresh or not, well, I've got the seven steps you need to go through to do that teed up in this next video for you here. If you like this video, let me know by clicking the like button, hitting subscribe, and make sure, as always, you ask your questions below. Love answering those for y'all. Here's to working from a place of more rest, less hustle, and I'll see you in the next video.